What are you doing? Well, you're live. I know that much. I'm live. Hey. (laughs) Oh, in order for a customer that I didn't get done. (laughs) We won't lose. It's been a little nutty today. (sighs) It feels good to just sit. I think I'll just sit for a minute. That sounds good. Is Joyce coming back? Uh Uh-oh, my tweezers. Do I have my tweezers? Mm, We've got one person out there watching. Did I take them up front? Uh Uh-oh. I must have We're missing our most favorite tweezers. The new new favorite. Oh. Oh, I could have said. No, they're not in there. Oh. What did I do with them? Did I walk away with them? Kathy's looking for her fusa weezers. My fusa weezers. Her favorite, favorite fusa weezers. Um. You know, Joyce probably has them in a in a holster somewhere. Hey, Nadine. Hey, Julie. Okay, you be the greeter. I probably took them up front with me. What do I do? Hi, with Leslie. Them? <laughs> so, I think I found them. Oh. There they are, the most important piece. This is my new favorite tool. I just learned about it yesterday, and now it's my favorite. Oh, we got Lib D out there. Cindy Espensheed, hello. Hello, oh, good. Janet Bell. Oh, good, good. Oh, we got 16 people. You better do something entertaining. Oh, you guys are prompt. They You're are. Very prompt. I like it. We're very excited when it's 3 o'clock, because that means we get to stop answering the phone, and we get to sit down and chat with you guys. It's awesome. Hey, Kathy Daly. Oh, hey, Kathy. I love that Katie's my romp- my romper room visibility. Yeah. <laughs> Janet says, now for happy time. Yes. Hey, guys, now for yes. happy time. That's right. That's what we do. What are we doing today? So today, we were going to talk about... Oh, hey, Joan. Hey, Margie. We... Oh, I just, I love them all. Sorry. I, <laughs> I know. It's so fun. It's so, so fun. I'm looking for all. Oh, I do have all kinds of things. Do you have everything you need back here? I have so many things back here. We're just, she's just surrounded, surrounded by, by things. By things in various states of, okay, can you tell that Joyce did not prep me today? Uh-oh. She's flying, <laughs> flying solo. I'm on my own. And it's, it's a lot easier when she just hands me stuff. But, um, okay, so today we were going to talk about different ways to make bias binding. Um, and so I wanted to show you that I actually, we went back to our original um, mask, which uh, Joyce did on the first day, where we put the pleats in. And then instead of sewing elastic or serging the edge, I actually attached with my serger, um, I made and attached a bias binding. So I started the bias binding and then I inserted the um, edge of my mask and then I continued on when it ran out and now I've got my two ties for this side so I was going to show you how to do it for this side. I figured you did not need me to do another pleated mask for you but these are this is a really um, popular way of doing it. Um, One thing I did do to this one which I really liked her idea from yesterday was I did put a little sleeve several people have mentioned this I put a sleeve on the top of it so that the inside our um, nose cozy. Our nose cozy that Joyce Mattis won the prize for coming up with the most clever name for this wire that goes across the bridge of our nose. And she named it our nose cozy, which I thought was a very cute name. So the nose cozy now has its own little pocket and it just slides in. And then when you go to wash it, you can slide it back out. The dimensions of this that Joyce used yesterday was two inches by six inches and I did the same dimensions. So I um, just folded it in on each side and then I just top stitched. Can you guys see how I just top stitched it on? Nothing too fancy. I leave. I left my ends um, open so then I can just slide it and then there's my pocket. Cool. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was a really nice ad. Cause I think the, I mean the recommendation is you really wanna wash these every time that you use them. Um, and so if you always have that wire in there, that's gonna get yucky really fast. So I thought that was a great add on. I tried to be clever and uh, do an elastic version with the bias and a couple of things went awry for me. The biggest thing that went awry was that I put the elastic in the center because remember I don't do these without Joyce prepping me and I was supposed to put the elastic at the top and the bottom so when you put it on you have like these wings that kind of doesn't, doesn't pull really <laughs> tight. Um, and it also, I don't think it's as, it took a lot longer to put the bias on the side. And then I was going to just show you how you could take the edge and just fold it back and then top stitch it down. Um, I don't think it's worth that trouble. I think her way of surging the side and then just folding it back with the elastic worked a lot better. So I thought I was going to be clever and give you one more new way of doing it. And I'll give you one more way 
not to do it. Don't try this. It was not that, didn't turn out that well. Okay, all right, so the very first thing we need to do when we are making bias, um, bias binding is you need to start with bias strips. And I have a really easy way that I like to do it. So that was the first thing I was gonna do is just show you how I organize my fabric um, to make my bias strips. So I would start with at least a fat quarter size. So here is, here's the size of a fat quarter, right here. Okay. Oh, this is what they can do with all those fat quarters. Yes, you can make bias strips. And you can get a lot of bias strips out of one fat quarter. So you take your fat quarter, and with you doing bias strips, you always, I always want to start with a square. It's the easiest way to find my perfect 45. Um, so I'm going to just take my, my um, fabric, and I'm going to fold it like this. You guys see that? So I'm going to just fold it, and then I'm going to cut off this surplus, and I'm going to cut down this edge. So I do have my rounder mat now. Now this is actually a longer cut, so a flatter mat would probably be better for me at this moment. But I'm gonna show you that I can use cool tools like Joyce can, so. In our little bit of studio back here. I know, so I'm gonna just cut across, and then I'm gonna pull it towards me. It's just a little bit smaller than I would prefer, but I'm, I can make it do. We're adaptable. We're very adaptable. So all that did, by cutting off that edge, it just got me to a square, okay? Then I'm gonna take this, and I want to cut my fold off. So I'm, since I'm working on a little mat, I'm just going to fold it one more time. And then where all my folds are, or this side, where all my folds are, I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and cut that off. Okay. And that's going to give me two triangles. So I can just this is our geometry lesson for the yeah, day. Yeah, I know. You have to have... <laughs> Quilting is mathematical. There's just no way of getting around it. So yes, we have geometry today. So now can you put on, can you look down on it and see that there's two triangles. And here's where my bias edge is, it's that inside cut. So if I just take my top triangle and bring it straight down, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together. It's gonna give me even uh, strip lengths of my uh, bias strips. So it makes them longer for me. Instead of if I didn't do that, I'd have a long one, then I'd have a shorter one, and then a shorter one, and a shorter and shorter and shorter. By doing it this way, so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna show you one more time. I have my square like this. I'm gonna bring it straight down so the straight sides are together. Whoops. Straight sides together. And then I'm gonna flip it over to sew them together. And I'm gonna end, with, end up with a parallelogram, another mathematical term. <laughs> okay, so this is just gonna use a straight stitch. Look at my sewing area. It, uh -oh. it is not like this when Joyce is back here. She cleans me all up. She's up front finishing up a few customer sales. We need her back here. You know, she's our other entertainment. She is. We like it when Joyce is part of our party. Here's the mask we made on the first day. What happened, Jan? I don't know what happened. What happened? Jan just says what happened. To what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a busy day and Joyce is up front finishing up a couple things and Kathy said she can handle the crowds. Yeah, we're on it. Okay, so now I've got my parallelogram. So here's the shape of it. Okay, and I'm gonna press that seam open. Anytime I'm making bias anything, I always want to make sure that I press my seams open because um, the binding is, we don't want that bulk of it being pressed one direction or the other. So I'm going to use my trusty iron. And this is where I love the point. And I love that it points front and back because I can start the opening of it. Let me get it open to start. There we go. I can open, but this little point on this iron just goes right down it. Can you see that? It just opens my seam right up for me. Love that. And I like it, you can go forwards or backwards and you get the benefit of that point. There it is. Okay. So there's my seam pressed open. And then I can take my mat off again. Then I want to be cutting my strips down the stretchy side. So if you get confused when you have the shape, what side are you cutting? If you touch this side, it's pretty taut. Not much give. You touch this side, lots and lots of give. So that's what we need to have is our straighter grain. 
So I just fold it up on itself to make it not so long, and I fold this one down. So I make a little package for myself. Oh, there it is. And then I'm using, I like to use the matte grid as well. So I'm gonna just do a cleaning cut. And then depending on what size I need my strips to be, then I would just use my ruler and I come over, let's say I want it to be a one and a half inch strip. So then I'm gonna just cut a one and a half inch bias, okay? So I was gonna show you, um, actually I'm gonna show you on the serger first because that's the way um, that I did it this morning and then I'm gonna show you a really tricky way to do it on the sewing machine. So Katie, I think you're gonna to have to come around here to be able to see the serger and let me just empty what's already loaded here. So. Hmm, I'm gonna come over this side. Okay, Here's so, our baby lock serger. So we had to change what machine we were on because the Acclaim is only a four thread overlock. And that means that when you're overlocking, you're always along the edge of your fabric. And the two loopers, the lower looper and the upper looper, meet on the outside edge of the fabric to form your stitches. And then the needles stitch on top and hold the stitches in position. When we want to do things like a bias binder, or a hemming or something like that, we have to move over to what's called the cover hem side. The cover hem, there's a chain looper that lives underneath the fabric, and so it doesn't have to be along the edge, and you're not using a knife when you use a chain looper. So when you're doing bias binding, we don't want our edge cut off because we wanna have that folded edge of our fabric forming the, the clean edge instead of the stitches forming the clean edge. That makes sense. So when we finished this guy, we used the overlocker to do a nice finished edge and the thread is what formed the edge. What we're doing now is we want the fabric to form the edge and we want the stitching to be up in the middle. And so then the, the chain looper lives on the bottom of the stitching and does its, for, its purpose underneath, okay? So it looks like twin needle on top and it looks like a, um, looks like a chain stitch on the bottom or a zigzag, so it's where it's all finished. All right, <gasps> Joyce, come join oh, us. Hello, welcome. <laughs> I was trying to take care of some customers. That's what we said. We knew you were up there finishing sales. Yes. We gotta, we gotta finish your sales. There's a few more we haven't finished yet, so don't be alarmed. We will get to you. Okay, so here is my, um, here is my uh, strip that I added on, and the trickiest part about getting these set up is getting the position so that it's feeding into your machine properly. So I have my, I currently have my machine set up for two needles on the um, right hand side. So it's a, it's called a right narrow cover hem. And a lot of cover hem machines um, have three different needle positions. So you can be on the left side, you can be wide, or you can be narrow. Narrow always involves the center needle, okay? So I set it up for a two thread, or a three thread um, narrow cover stitch. And that's what I'm gonna be using to do that stitching for me. There are all kinds of attachments for these machines that give you really professional results. This one is a 30, 35 millimeter uh, double fold bias binder, which means it can create the binding and attach it at the same time. Super cool. Um, it also can just make the binding with no attachment as well. So on the instructions of the um, packaging, which I think I left up front, it tells you what size strip you need to cut for this size binder. And the strip size is actually going to fit exactly the size of this, um, let me get this in here, exactly the size of this channel that's feeding it in. So it's gonna give you the dimensions. And there are there's different sizes of these. So um, it doesn't really, the, the bigger the number, obviously the wider it is. This one makes about a 3 8 inch finished. So I think I started with one and a half inches. That's what you just cut. Well, I cut that for a different, a different thing. Anyway, oh. I think it was about one and a half. I could measure it. Let's see how wide I cut it, because I can't remember, to be honest. That was this morning. That was a long, <laughs> long time, time, ago. time ago. If yes. Joyce was my prep girl, she'd know what I cut. Actually, it was one and three-eighths. That's right. I cut it one and three-eighths inches. Of course. Okay. 
So where's my tweezer weezer thing? Here it is. Use a weezers. Here Use a weezers are yeah. super okay, pointy. Okay, so this is what's so cool about this. So we want these tools to do the work for us. We don't want to force the tool to do what we want it to do. So if you are, if you allow the tool to do its job, it's going to feed your fabric where it needs to go. I did not do anything to this fabric other than cut it by a strip. You can also see here's my seam, and it's not going to care. It's just going to ignore, but I did press it open. So you can see it. all of my strips are going to end up being the exact same size because I put that seam in there when I took my two halves of my fat quarter. So we're going to feed it into this area in here, and this slot is here for you, for you to be able to take something sharp and push it through. So see how I'm just going to push it through a little bit until it starts to come out the front. And as soon as it comes out the front, come on out. I just want a little tip of it. There we go. As soon as it starts to come out the front, then instead of pushing further, I'm going to actually grab that tip. Whoop. There we go. Grab the tip. You got to raise your foot. And I'm going to just pull back into the machine. Whoop. And I'm letting the tool do all the folding and all the work. I am not doing any of the work. So it looks like I've actually pushed myself over. I'm kind of sitting cockeyed. There we go. All right. And then I can put my foot down and I could start stitching. This is not a speed race. Okay, so I forgot to do one thing before I started, and that was mark my um, bias strip, how long I need it before I insert my mask. So I'm gonna just do a really quick measurement here because I want it to be about the same length as this one. And these are gonna form my ties. So when I get to here, so I'm gonna put a little mark. Need a pin? I do. Would need you a pen. like it? There you go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Joyce to the rescue! I knew I couldn't do it without you. Okay, I'm just putting a little mark so that when I get when this gets close to my foot, then I know I need to put my mask up. I'm just gonna keep stitching. And there goes that seam right through it. I know it does a really, so really nice pretty. job. Okay, so my dash just went into the machine. And now I'm gonna take my mask. Which she threw on the floor. Which I threw on the floor, because I'm that kind of girl. So I made the pleated mask again, and I did just top stitch along the edge to keep those pleats from getting all pulled on. But basically, I'm just gonna slide this right in, just with, just, just slide it up to my tool. I'm not going to push it or force it or do anything else. And then I'm going to just keep stitching. Look how slick that is. It just inserts it right Beautiful. in. Beautiful. Like a professional. I know. And then I just keep going. I can't take it slow. You just have to be slow. There we go. And look, Beautiful. I just look made my whole strap. So Isn't that cool. awesome? So tailored. It's such a finish. beautiful finish. It does a great job. And then it does put the overlocking on the back side. Makes it really strong, too. It is. And it's got a really nice give to it. It's got really nice, because it's bias, can you see the, all the, the nice stretch to it? I didn't. Like a knit, doesn't it? It is. It feels mm -hmm. like it's a knit because of the bias. I did not do any prep of this fabric. I didn't terial magic it. I didn't do anything to make it stiff or no magic um, anything. No magic involved. Yeah. The only thing that you really have to think about is when you go to put that in, you're just going to feed it until it gets to here, and you're going to push it until it starts to come out. you got to raise your foot. Until it starts to, you just want to just see it at the tip here. Whoop, I'm pushing too far. Come on, come on out. There it goes. Come on out. It's being unruly now. You now that I told so, you how easy this is. Can we, so we, can we get bias attachments for um, sewing machines, not there just are, surgeons? Yes, yes. So I was going to tell you that this, um, there's something very, very similar, for, similar to this for other brands of, mach of sewing machines as well. Um, and a lot of your throat plates, one of the things is that your, your um, area of your machine over here, needs to have screw holes. So if you have a machine, because it has to attach to something, so just like this one, it is screwed on here. Can you see the screws? Mm -hmm. That allows you, by loosening these screws, it allows you to change the position, whoops, allows you to change the position of this foot so that it lines up exactly with the needles. Um, but it, you can also do that same thing with a straight stitch on your sewing machine. 
So I was going to bring that back here, and to be honest, I totally forgot to grab she one. She ran out of time, yeah, but I can of course. it. Well, yeah. so we have it for the Bernina. We also yeah. have it for other brands Yes, as well. and the Foff also has one for binding on a quilt. Um, it has a two-and-a-half-inch binder that you can use uh, that will yes. start with two-and-a-half-inch stitches, stitches, stitch widths. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, Throwing things again. Yes, uh, not stitch width. Strips of fabric width. Um, and it'll put the it'll attach the um, the binding to it. So I keep thinking I need to do a demo for that. I just haven't ever gotten it done. And next week, I just want to tell you, I'm going to bring my friend the icon over because there were a couple questions about why am I always sewing on a Bernina. Um, it's because it's in the classroom and I'm lazy, so it's the one that's here. Um, but I'm going to bring my icon over and we're going to do some demos with the icon yes, next we are. week. So. Just want you to know I love them all. <laughs> so Marilyn Nyland wants to know how long is each bias tie? Okay, so I started with a 30-inch square, and it makes a 30-inch square makes about a 40-inch strip. And that's a really nice amount because for this, they need to tie twice. They need to tie um, up high, so whoop, they'd be tying here, and then they would also be tying at the back of their neck. So it would be tied twice. So you need uh, just enough to be able to tie, and I think this is a nice length. It ends up, um, this was just about 40 inches. And then when I get to the ends, I just put a little knot in the end of the tape, because um, it doesn't really have a finished end. Um, so I just do a little knot, and that's how you can finish it off. Super simple. Um, okay, so here are, this is what the bias binder attaches. So it looks really similar. It's the same idea. This is the Bernina. And the same thing, you're going to feed the fabric in through here. It curls it on the inside, and then there's room for you to insert your mask or whatever else it is so that it can be attached with the bias binding as it's going on. So this also will attach and make at the same time. Yep, and it swings away, like if you were putting it on a quilt, right? It swings away so you could do your corners and then brings it back right. towards your machine because this is right. the plate right. that it goes on. Right, it goes onto a plate like this. Mm -hmm. okay. How much is it for the Bernina? They have different um, widths. So just like on the um, baby lock thing, so for, the, for this one, this happens to be the 38 millimeter, and it's it's a, it's an investment. It's 283.95, right. and you do need the 95 foot to go with it. Right, and I think the Foff one is like one. I want to say 169. It's something like that. These are a little more um, precision tooled mm -hmm. accessories for your machine, but they give you really professional results. So it's yes. worth investing in that stuff. Um, okay, so if you don't want to invest in the, one of those beautiful bias binder makers, I'm going to show you another really cool trick that is going around on the internet, and maybe it's you guys so have cool. seen this. A variety of people have done it. It's really, really cool. It is. And you take a piece of paper and a bias strip. So you still need a bias strip. And your piece of paper needs to be about the same size as your bias strip, so I'm going to just take this bias strip that I just cut from my fat quarter, and I just cut my paper about the same size as it. So here's my bias strip, and I'm just going to lay it on top of my paper, because I don't remember how wide I cut it. I'm always mixing myself up around, and then I'm mm. just going to cut my, it doesn't have to be precision precision, but about like that. And then I'm going to do a really fancy folding job. I'm going to fold it to the middle, like this. I'm going to fold it to the middle. So my fabric is folding to the middle, like this. So there's my fabric folded to the middle. See the gap in the middle? And then I'm going to fold it in half, like this. Voila. And there mm -hmm. is paper, a piece of paper. What's cool about it is that it will actually slide. So I'm going to start sewing. It will actually slide down my fabric as I'm sewing. So. I haven't really done much of this. Joyce. That's how I did these. Um, Joyce made yeah. her skinny ones mm -hmm. doing it this way, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. fun. So I'm going to start this one, and it's helpful if you start stitching before you start pulling the, the paper back. Oh. Kathy Christman says cardstock instead of paper works very well. Oh, cardstock instead of paper. All right. That's a good plan. It's so cool. All right, and then I'm just going to slide it back as I go. My bias, I might have it a little too tight. There we go. The nice thing about this is that it keeps it closed and it keeps your edges It keeps together. it closed yes. and together, and I'm just sliding back a little bit as I go. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Is your stitch line small? It's so tiny. No? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> it could be because I'm pulling a tiny bit. Mm. I just thought this was so clever. It is. It was, it was 
awesome doing it. It's so way. it's so cool. I think this is like a whole genius. Oh, it is. Oh, I okay. edge. I misbehaved. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's problem. at least one video on YouTube where this looks really easy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think this is still pretty. Good. I let myself unfold. Ah. You know, it's it's me. It, remember, it's me. It's real life. Okay. Well, you got the you idea. You got the idea. Let me just saw. Yeah, I loved it. Oh. There we go. <laughs> it's still actually really, really cool. That's that's pretty awesome for a piece of paper. Yes. I mean, really. All right. We gave you a full 50 minutes of entertainment yesterday, so we decided today. Yes, did you tell them about, about the Anita Good Designs being in? Oh, yes. Oh. All Access. Um, Anita Good Design was holding our orders, but we did call them and say that we are in the building every day. So All Access is here ready for you guys to pick up. That's a fun little treat. to. Um, and I know a lot of you are stitching at home. Yes. Lots of great projects in it this month. Oh, it's so this, cute. There's uh, this month. little hippo with a scuba diving mask on it. I'm in love with him. Can you see him? And this is the oh porcupine gosh. guy. So, yeah. And unicorns. And it's adorable. That's so, right. Yep. That's right. All right, so tomorrow, uh, Joyce is going to come back with um, AccuQuilt Basics. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you that are wanting to know more, it'll be a great opportunity. And then for those of you who already know stuff, join in because Joyce always has a new tip for you. You never know. You yeah, yep. never know what you'll learn. <laughs> so anyway, we love seeing you guys. with you. Thank you for showing up. Thanks see for you. coming and getting stuff from us, and we'll yep. see you soon.